Well, in the upper right-hand corner of the Vitruvian Man illustration is a page number, not written in backwards mirrored text. And we know when da Vinci doesn't write in backwards mirrored text, usually it's encrypted. There was no book that this was a part of. This was a loose leaf illustration. <laughs> so why would it have a page number on it? And the page number illustrated there is 126, 1.26. The doubling of the octave, increasing the side of a cube by 1.26 doubles its octave. So what he was trying to tell us was about the coming new age where mankind doubles his octave into a higher dimension. And that 1.26 is not only true in mathematics, it's true in musical ratio. I was just recently asked by a neuroscientist at UCI, University of California, Irvine. His name is Donald Hoffman. He's probably the world's expert on mathematically mapping human consciousness. And we spent the afternoon together and he said, can you tell me, think about how consciousness might actually have an equation for our emotions. So can you apply a mathematical equation to an emotion? I already understood that our brains at our you know, left temporal lobe and our right temporal lobe, that's exactly like right here, right on both sides of our head. And one side is the seat of music. On the other side of the brain, so the left temporal lobe, it's where we process mathematics. So there's this concept of mirror neurons, right? And how people can mirror mimic. The same thing happens within our brain. And so you could say that the visual arts would be in the occipital lobe, in the back of our brain, on the right side. And then what we call the material sciences would be the representation of that manifested form, art imitating life. So then we have biology and chemistry and physics over here, right in the back of our brain. Can music create or be a catalyst for emotional response? When you listen to music, can it bring on different emotions for you? Music is just the the geometry that we experience with our ears. So then maybe what are the different waveforms of music that could cause us to feel different emotions like joy, like happiness or sadness? Whenever villains enter or Darth Vader comes in, it's like dun 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 dun. dun, dun. <laughs> well, that's diminished fifths. The diminished fifth is the relationship that always is associated with devilishness and like the villain is coming in. Generally, the minor chords bring what we would call negative emotions along with them. We can entrain people sympathetically to those resonances and we can agitate fear-based states just by playing minor chords. And generally those major chords are gonna make you feel happy. They're gonna raise your spirits and make you feel lighter. So I started looking at the mathematics of what creates these chord relationships. And the mathematics is mathematical intervals. So three over two is the perfect fifth. And three over two giving you the perfect fifth is actually this beautiful feeling of stability. It makes you feel safe. It's a major chord, right? That'd be like C to G on a piano keyboard. But then when you get to the diminished fifth, diminished fifth is this very negative feeling. It makes you scared. But if you play the major third, you feel love. The major third is 1.26. That is the cube root of two. That is the major third. That's the doubling of the cube. So we're now doubling our octave through the major third, which is the interval of music that creates a feeling and sensation of joy and love. And there it was as one of the page numbers on a page illustrated that was never part of a book.